morning, everyone. My name is Tiana, and today I'm going to present our work on learning group-wise multivariate scoring functions using deep neural networks. This is, uh, and this is my previous internship work on the Google research. So here's an outline of this presentation. In the first part, we will introduce the motivation of our paper about learning to rank and problem analysis. As we know, learning to rank has been extensively studied in the past decades. In a traditional learning to rank framework, we first extract some features to represent each query dumping pair in a feature space. Then we build a machine learning model to predict the score for each document based on its feature vectors. If we like the feature vector of our query document pair being S, then our machine learning model is just a function F that projects X into some kind of ranking score Fx so that we can produce a rank list based on the ranking scores. Well, there is a variety of learning to rank model proposed in the last decade. Most of them can be categorized into three groups. The first group is the point-wise learning to rank models. The idea of the point-wise learning to rank model is to treat ranking as a problem of classification or regression. Specifically, it views the model by computing the loss of each uh, data point based on the label we have for that target document and the ranking score we have for that query document here. We can use plots such as the mean square error or uh, any, any type of pointwise log to optimize this kind of model. However, in practice, this pointwise method has an important problem because it doesn't really care about ranking. Its optimization goal just shows how the model approximates the label of the document, but it doesn't definitely mean that a good model, a model that can better approximate the label can produce a good rankingness. So aware of this problem, learn to run models based on pairwise loss is proposed. The idea of pairwise learning to, uh, pairwise ranking loss is to compare the ranking scores of two documents in training. So in this way, we will directly optimize the preference of documents, but not the label of the documents. Further, as an extension to the pairwise methods, a new group of learning to run method based on the leastwise ranking loss is proposed. The idea of leastwise ranking is to take a list of documents as input and it directly trains the model to optimize the ranking metrics of this whole list of documents. Empirically, pairwise and listwise methods are much more effective than the pointwise methods. Despite their difference, as we can see here, existing learning to rank models share a common characteristic in their structures. That is, they all assume that the document should should be ranked according to the probability ranking principle. In the probability ranking principle, each document has a fixed probability to satisfy the information need of a specific query. So the ranking score of a query document pair should be directly computed or computed independently with different documents. The problem with this paradigm is that more and more recent experiments show, show that such scoring paradigm cannot directly indicate the usefulness of material with respect to the user's information need. For example, here's a case of two queries about two famous musicians, Frank Sinatra and Taylor Swift. On the search result page, we show the wiki page of, uh, we show the wiki page of those two artists at the top. But what we observe in practice is that while many people would click the wiki page of Frank Sinatra, not many people would click the wiki page of Taylor Swift. To understand why this happened, we can look at the details of those results. When we look at the result on when we look at the result on this result page, we can easily find that all the results on the left are fairly old 
well, all the results on the right are updated recently. So given this context information, it's more likely that the people who search for Frank Sinatra is looking for his bio information, while the people who search for Taylor Swift is looking for her latest news or events. If we only score the relevance of each document based on their own information, we cannot capture this context information. Another problem with the probability ranking principle is related with how human process information relevance. Although we usually use the relevance label as the training signal for our language rank model, it is actually not very natural for people to evaluate relevance using this uh, label way. For example, suppose that we show the result, uh, we show this result to a user and let them judge how relevant this result is to the query. They may think this, uh, since this is a Twitter from Frank Sinatra and the query is Frank Sinatra, so this result seems to be a relevant result. The truth is, when people are requested to judge the level of relevance for a single result, they usually have, dif uh, they usually have difficult time in understanding what exactly is the definition of relevance and how relevant the, re the result should be in order to be classified into some relevant category. However, if we show two results to the user, they can easily tell which result could be more, well, they can easily tell which result is more relevant by just reading and comparing them. This is a more natural way for people to judge relevance and to choose which result to click or interact. But this notion of comparison is not possible if we just allow our model to take one pair of query document pair, it's a one query document pair each time. Based on these observations, the research question we want to study in this paper is how to compute the relevance of an item by comparison with other items in the list effectively and efficiently. In the next part, we will introduce our uh, main approach. In this paper, we try to solve the problems of existing learning to web methods by introducing a new scoring paradigm named the multivariate scoring functions. The idea of this multivariate scoring function is to let the learning to write model take multiple documents as input, and it jointly predicts their ranking scores based on the interaction and comparison of them. Okay. <coughs> For simplicity, we parameterize all the models in deep neural networks in this paper. DNN has a couple of advantages for our problems. First, it supports any type of features. It could be dense features, sparse features, embedding features, any type of features. And also, it can take arbitrary size and arbitrary input size, which means that we can easily input one document into it, two document, or even more document into the deep neural networks. Also, the output of the deep neural network can also have an arbitrary size, which is important for our multivariate scoring functions. Specifically for multivariate ranking, we propose a group-wise scoring function based on the deep neural networks. For example, Suppose that our input is a list of documents with three documents, x1, x2, and x3. So in our groupwise scoring functions, we use a groupwise ranking function that takes two documents as input and produces two scores for them. After that, we aggregate the scores of each document from each group comparison to form the final ranking score for all documents together. In this example, the input is the document list with three documents, which means that the list size is three. And the, compa uh, the comparison function takes a group size of two documents as input, which means that the group size is two. 
As for training, we can choose any type of existing ranking loss. For example, we can, we can choose a pointwise loss such as the sigmoid cross entropy, or a pairwise loss like the logistic loss, or a listwise loss like the subclass cross entropy. In texting, because we are now have a ranking function that takes multiple documents as input, the inference process could be a little bit more complicated. First, suppose that the output document list has a fifth length. Then we can set the input list size and the output list size equal to the list length and run the group-wise ranking function directly. For example, here we have a fixed list length as three, so we just input three documents into it and directly compute the score for those three documents. In practice, it is possible that we would have different number of documents for each query, so we need our model to handle those very, very lengths, very lengths of uh, the records. To generate our group-wise scoring function to arbitrary list lengths, we pick up the DNN model we learned from the group-wise scoring functions and we <coughs> apply it directly on a randomly shuffled list of the documents. So we originally we have a set of documents, we just randomly shuffle them and apply this group-wise uh, group scoring function on each group of them. We could use the score obtained from each group and aggregate them to represent the final score for that document. Because the list is randomly shuffled, the score we get here should be a good approximation of the real group wise scores we, uh, that compares each document to all documents. If this kind of approximation is too aggressive to you, you can also pick up other methods to approximate this. For example, you can just pick a small set of documents and compare them to all documents. With this new formulation, we can even find the relationship between the existing learning program methods and our group-wise scoring functions. The original point-wise method can be treated as a group-wise scoring function with group size as 1, and also the list size is 1. The original pairwise method can be treated as a group-wise scoring function with group size as 1, and the list size as 2. And the original list-wise method can be treated as a group, uh, group scoring function with group size 1 and list size D. Next, experiments. In our experiments, we test GSF on two learning terrain dataset. The first one is the Gmail search dataset. In Gmail search dataset, we build the dataset with real Gmail search logs that we use in user clicks, and it has 150 million sessions. It contains both dense features and sparse features. By sparse features, I mean things like word embedded. Also, in this dataset, we have a fixed candidate length, a candidate list length, which means that each query can have, have at most six documents. Another dataset we test is the public uh, is the public learning to rank dataset called the Microsoft 30K or Web 30K. In this dataset, we have the five level relevance annotations. We have some dense features extracted by uh, by some human expert, and also in this dataset we have arbitrary candidate list lens. So some document and uh, some query may just have like ten documents. Well, some query could have like a hundred documents. As for the evaluation, on the Gmail search dataset, because we only have user tricks, we use the weighted mean reciprocal rank as our evaluation matrix. It is an unbiased evaluation matrix based on user tricks. And for the public learning rank dataset, we use the standard ranking metrics such as the NDCG at 1, at 5, and at 10. Here are the DNN baselines and our GSF variance tested in the experiment. 
The first model, the point-wise DNN, is the standard DNN model with a univariate scoring function, the point-wise scoring function, and with point-wise loss. The second one, the RefNet, is a neural network model using the point-wise scoring functions and the pairwise loss. The third one, the bind DNN, is the DNN model with the bivariate scoring function and sigmoid cross entropy. As for different variant of our GSF model, it has the pairwise GSF, which is using the group size as one, uh, is essentially a pointwise scoring function, and a pairwise loss, similar to the RefNet. And we also test the bi GSF, which is a GSF reduced to a bivariate scoring function. So bivariate scoring function is just a function that takes two documents as input. And finally, our general GSF model with group size as M. Here are some results. So first, on Gmail search, we observed that the multivariate functions perform better than the univariate functions with both dense features and the sparse features. And the performance of those multivariate scoring functions is uh, especially good on the dense features. Then if we look at the effect of different group size, we notice that there's a big jump from group size 1 to group size 2, which is switching from a univariate scoring function to a bivariate scoring function. Similarly, on Web 30K, we observe that increasing group size from 1 to 64 can improve the performance of our model. But the group size is not larger the better. After some point, the DNN model cannot support the huge number of permutations generated from a large group size, and the performance will drop. Here are more results comparing our model with different baselines. So first on Gmail search, we observed that the GSF can outperform Lambda Mark a little bit. With, uh, Lambda Mark is uh, one of the state-of-the-art learning graph models based on tree models. And by combining, uh, by combining them, we can achieve a large margin of gain over the original Lambda Mark model. Another good thing of our GSF model is that we can incorporate in all kinds of features, uh, both the dense features and the sparse features like embeddings. So we can see that after we combine uh, both dense features and sparse features, the combined model of lambda mark and GSF can outperform the original lambda mark with a very large margin. And on, and on web 30 k we notice that the multivariate functions usually perform better than the univariate functions. Also, the performance would be the best when we use both the multivariate functions with large group size and the listwise ranking loss. If we further compare our model with strong baseline on web 30 k we notice that our model actually has a similar performance with Lambda Mart. Lambda Mart is considered to be a very strong model on this Web 30K, and to the best of our knowledge, our model is the first standalone deep models that, I, that can achieve similar performance with Lambda Mart on learning to run tasks. Finally, as a summary, in this paper, we show that univariate scoring function under the probability ranking principle could be problematic for learning to run in some scenarios. And based on our observations, we propose a group-wise multivariate scoring function that takes multiple documents as input and scores them together. Our experiments demonstrate that multivariate functions indeed have some merit over the univariate functions. Our model is open source in the official TF ranking package now, and you can find a demo from this URL. And that's all. Thank you for listening.